Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Google BigQuery components from within the SSIS Productivity Pack product. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. At the time of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack is on version 20.2.1, which offers three components for Google BigQuery. Google BigQuery Connection Manager, Google BigQuery Source Component, and Google BigQuery Destination Component. The Connection Manager can be used to establish connections with Google BigQuery. The Source Component can be used to read or retrieve data from a Google BigQuery. The Destination Component can be used to write data to Google BigQuery. Let's begin by creating our Google BigQuery Connection Manager. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. Select the Google BigQuery item to add this new connection manager. The authentication mode option allows you to specify how you want to authenticate to your Google service. We have two options available, authorization code and service account. The service account option allows you to specify the account, which will be used to connect to your Google service. You can store your certificate to be used for authentication in one of two locations, store or file system. Lastly, the Certificate Thumbprint option allows you to specify the thumbprint of the selected certificate in order to authenticate using your Google service account. This option is only available when your certificate location is selected as Store. Today's demo will use Authorization Code as the authentication mode. Let's click on Generate New Token here, which will open a new window. There are two types of authorization. The Kingsway Soft option will have the Connection Manager use a Client ID and Secret that's provided by Kingsway Soft for your convenience when setting up the connection. It's important to note that this should never be used for production purposes. The My Own App option allows you to use your own client ID and secret to connect to Google services. We'll select the Kingsway Soft option. Today, I will use my default browser to sign in. If the Use Default Browser to Sign In option is unchecked, it will complete the entire OAuth authentication process inside of the toolkit. Let's click on Sign In and Authenticate. In our default browser, you can see that the client ID is in the URL field. I'll just enter my credentials here. As this is a connection to Google BigQuery, we only request access to Google BigQuery. Once you have authenticated your Google account, you can enter the redirect URL and click OK. You'll find options to specify the path, to the token file on your file system and where to specify the password of the selected token file. Below are your token file details. Navigating to the advanced settings page, you can configure proxy server settings if a proxy is required. There are a few other options in the miscellaneous section, starting with the timeout option, where you can specify a timeout value in seconds for the connection. This is defaulted to 120 seconds. The API throttling rate option allows you to restrict how many requests you want to send to Google BigQuery per second. This rate is set to 10 by default, and you can adjust upward from there for optimization as required. There is also an option for retry on intermittent errors. This option is intended to help recover from possible intermittent outages or disruption of service, so that the integration does not have to be stopped due to temporary networking issues. We have designed this option so that it should only retry when it's deemed to be safe to do so, but there may be exceptions. Before we hit OK, we can test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Please note that the connection manager that we just created is a package level connection manager. For SSAS 2012 or later, you can create project level connection managers if you right click the connection managers node within the solution explorer. Let's begin configuring our data flow task starting with our Google BigQuery source component by dragging it to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. As mentioned before, the Google BigQuery source component is an SSIS data flow pipeline component that can be used to read or retrieve data from Google BigQuery. Let's select a Google BigQuery connection manager. The object type will have a drop-down list that contains a list of available object types in Google BigQuery. There are a few options available. Project where it lists all projects to which you have been granted any project role. Data set, where it lists all data sets in the specified project to which you have been granted the data set reader role. 
job, where it lists all jobs that you started in the specific project. Table, where it lists all tables in the specified data set, to which you have been granted the data set reader role. Table data, where you can retrieve table data from a specified table. And finally, query, where you can run a BigQuery SQL query and return results if the query completes. Let's select query as our example now. The project option allows you to specify which project you want to read from Google BigQuery. This drop-down list will display all available projects in your Google BigQuery. The dataset option allows you to specify which dataset you want to read from Google BigQuery. The drop-down will present a list of all available datasets in the specified project. The create query job option allows you to create a query job in BigQuery when executing BigQuery SQL query text. This option is only available when working with the query option type. When this option is enabled, the poll throttle rate option will be available where you can limit the number of polling requests that can be sent per second. This can be very useful to limit the rates to get query job status when you enable the create query job option. The page size option allows you to specify how many records you want to retrieve each time. The output as JSON option specifies whether the output should be one single output column, which contains the values in JSON format for each row returned by Google BigQuery. It's worthwhile to mention that this option is only available when the option type is either table data or query. The use query cache option allows you to specify whether to look for the result in the query cache. This option is unchecked by default. The use legacy SQL option allows you to specify whether to use Google BigQuery's legacy SQL dialect for this query. This option is also checked by default. If you uncheck this option, the query will use Google BigQuery's standard SQL. Finally, the query text box lets you specify a snippet of query to retrieve data or create a query job in Google BigQuery. I will enter a sample select statement here for demonstration purposes. As another example, let's select table data. The table option allows you to specify which table you want to read from Google BigQuery. The dropdown will present a list of all available tables in the specified data set. The start row option allows you to specify the index of the starting row to read. As we can see, the default value is zero. Please be aware, row index in Google BigQuery is zero based. When you set the start row option to zero, the components will read the table data from the first row. This option is only available when the object type table data is selected. Let's head to the columns page where we can see all available fields from the report type specified. By default, all fields are selected. This may not be the best practice. We recommend you to only select the fields that you need to use in the downstream pipeline components. We also have a refresh component button, which will retrieve the latest metadata and update each field to its most recent metadata. Let's click OK to finish configuring our source components. For this demonstration, we're going to add a dummy data reader destination component for the purpose of showing you how the data flows from the source to destination components. We can now execute this task successfully. Now let's take a look at the Google BigQuery destination component. To demonstrate this capability, we will first use the data spawner for our upstream data flow component in order to write to Google BigQuery. The data spawner component is also available in our SSIS productivity pack. Now let's drag the Google BigQuery destination component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface and connect to our upstream component. Let's select a Google BigQuery connection manager. The object type option allows you to specify the Google BigQuery object you want to work with. There are four types available, data set, job, table, and table data. Now, depending on the object type you have specified, there are different actions available for the object type. For example, when selecting the table object type, we have four actions, insert, patch, update, and delete. For our example today, we will select the table data object where we can only perform an insert action. The project option allows you to specify which project you want to write to Google BigQuery. The dropdown will present a list of available projects in your Google BigQuery. The data set option allows you to specify which data set you want to write to Google BigQuery. The dropdown will present a list of all available data sets in the specified project. The table option allows you to specify which table you want to write to 
Google BigQuery. The dropdown will present a list of all available tables in the specified data set. The page size option allows you to specify how many records to send in a request. If the template suffix option is specified, Google BigQuery would treat the destination table as a base template and insert the rows into an instance table named destination template suffix. BigQuery will manage the creation of the instance table using the schema of the base template table. For more details, Google Cloud has a very helpful resource when working with the template tables. This is available in our Google BigQuery destination help manual page. If the ignore unknown values option is enabled, Google BigQuery will accept rows that contain values that do not match the schema. The unknown values are ignored. This is unchecked by default. If the skip invalid rows option is enabled, the component will insert all valid rows to the specified table even if invalid rows exist. This is unchecked by default, which causes the entire insert action to fail if any invalid rows exist. The insert as JSON option specifies whether the input should be one single input column, which takes the value in JSON format from upstream components. Now let's take a look at the columns page where we can map the columns from upstream components to the Google BigQuery fields. As you can see, the mapping has already been done for us based on the name match. The last page is the error handling page where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is to fail on error, where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. These three error columns can usually help you identify why the error happened. The ignore error option is generally not recommended. We have now established our data flow. Now we can execute this data flow task successfully. This concludes the demonstration of the Google BigQuery components within our SSIS productivity pack. There are many other components in the SSIS productivity pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Google BigQuery is just one of the Google services that is supported by our SSIS product family. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.